Hello and welcome. You join me here today at Coventry outside the Herbert Art Gallery and Museum, where we will have a look around Rare from 8-bit to Xbox One, an exploration of Rare's history and also a look of how we made Sea of Thieves and everything that went into it. So sit back and we'll go and have a look behind the scenes. We are inside the Rare Exhibition now, we start the history section. We've got things from throughout the decades, from dev kits through to plushies, so yeah, let's go and look at some of my favourites. So here we are in the 80s where Ultimate and Rare started and this display sort of shows the, the mix of objects we wanted to try and get into the exhibition itself because it's not everything from Rare itself. We want to try and get in some of the, the peripheral objects. So here we have a paper clipping from one of the magazines that actually shows the original offices of Ultimate in Ashby de la Zouche. A uh, very nice little plaque on the wall there. But also we have the cartoon that used to run in Crash Magazine of Jetman. Um, anyone who knows me knows I love Solar Jetman and this is basically his extended media outing through the comic strip and this is one of the originals that the artist did and you can see it's larger than the cartoon and the magazine itself but it just shows the style and how Ultimate extended beyond the console at the time. This ran for years in the magazine and it's just it's lovely that we can have a piece like this in the exhibition. Also we have some sprite work from RC Pro-Am and this is for me this is lovely this shows how games used to be made like just building up the graphics from little blocks of colour that had to be put together like Lego bricks. It's something that you just don't get anymore in modern games, so it's absolutely lovely. And here we are at the case that probably caused the curators the most distress. Uh, if you look around uh, most exhibitions, you'll see that uh, most object cases are carefully placed, uh, sparse, maybe a bit of um, descriptive text. Here, we just try to put as many things in as possible to try and convey just how many games that Ultimate and Rare have done over the years. In this case, we've got everything from the Spectrum, the Famicom, the NES, right through to the modern day with Xbox One. And this is only just a small sample of what Rare's put out over the years. We've got classics like Taboo. We also have classic Japanese cases of Banjo-Kazooie and Blast Core as well. So looking around, everyone always has a different favourite in this case. So uh, yeah, see which one's yours. One of the stipulations I was given when putting together the exhibition was that I had to limit the number of circuit boards I had to put in the display. Because uh, we've got a load of old arcade machines, some, some really, really sexy NES boards, but apparently they don't sell well with the public, so I had to limit the amount. So these are the few hardware pieces that I could sneak in. Uh, here we have a Famicom dev kit uh, and a SNES dev kit. The dev kits were how developers get the game onto a console to test it. And as you can see for this first one, it's basically just an exposed circuit board. We had to copy the games onto little chips and then place the chips directly into the console itself. You really can't beat an old bit of hardware like this. Okay, we've jumped forward in time to the 2010s now with Viva Piñata and uh, Star of Dinosaur Planet, which eventually became Star Fox Adventures. One thing when putting together everything that's on the wall I found I was a real sucker for was the concept art. Throughout all the games, you give me a pencil sketchbook of uh, some characters and I'm just blown away by it. So the evolution of the Cluckles. Viva Piñata was probably my favourite game to work on and so seeing some of Ryan's original sketches of how the characters, the animals came to be, absolutely glorious. It's just a shame we could only show one page of this. But elsewhere in the exhibition as well we've got some early Battletoad sketches, possibly from Greg's own hand we like to think, of levels that never made it into the game and the introduction storyboard to Dream which uh, is obviously a legendary game that then became Banjo. But there's so many little nuggets hidden away that we hope that we've served everyone within this exhibition. We're now in the second half of the exhibition here at the Herbert in Coventry, and it's dedicated to Sea of Thieves. Whereas the other half of the exhibition is all about what made Rare and how we built it up together, we wanted this half to be about the people who are at Rare. So we take you through the life of a skelly. We want to show you how features get in the game. We want to show how the designers come up with concepts and it goes right the way through art, programming, testing and production to your consoles at home. Whilst the developers may have made the game, the people who truly make the game are our community. The players, the people who take Sea of Thieves from strength to strength. 
and we really wanted to feature them in the exhibition somehow. So we contacted the very lovely Liz LaRue, Liz Burton, who makes these lovely props from the game itself. On display, she has very kindly lent us a lantern and a ship that you may have seen from the Galleon's captain's table. They're absolutely lovely and they really show the dedication that our players and our community have towards the game that we love so much. And this concludes our look around the rare exhibition from the Herbert in Coventry. It's been an absolute blast showing you around and hopefully you've enjoyed having a tour around behind the scenes too. So, until the next time, maybe in another 30 years, goodbye.